good fella. Your yes, Christmas uh, story. Uh, well, first of all, I've just noticed that for some bizarre reason, my face is very purple, and I don't know why that is, because I'm not even that warm. <laughs> I don't know what's going us. on. I'm starting to get it's, paranoid. It's I think it might be that. It it's might be the, app, the Apple Jack or something. I, I don't know what's going on, but it's bloody weird. Anyway, it's, um, the, manda- it's the mandatory diversity quota. You know, it's, it's taking action. Ex- eccentric hat might be able to understand where I'm coming from. Somebody mentioned annuals earlier, Bino and Dando. We got the Bruins and Ur Willy. Anyway, <laughs> um, well, the, the other day I was listening to the radio, right? And I got so fucking pissed off at the radio because they edited a song, right? And it reminded me of one of my favorite Christmas memories, right? Which I've actually got a few, I'm quite lucky. Um, And it was like, I got one of these small presents. You know, you get like a big gift and then you get small gifts. One of the small gifts was a ball and it had two dials on it, right? One was a volume and one was a tuner. It was a little radio, right? And I I loved it, right? This was like the late 80s and I loved this stuff. Uh, and, and I tuned the radio, and the first song to come on that I found was Fairy Tale of New York. And oh. ever since then, I have just loved that song. And the other day on the radio, they fucking edited that song. <laughs> and I was like, but I've been listening to that song for almost 35 years or something. And now all of a sudden, we can't hear the words in the song. They didn't say the word slut. They didn't say the word faggot. Because, I don't know, people are upset. I don't know why. And, and it's just it annoyed me so much, but yet it reminded me of that memory of getting that that small radio, even though it was the small present, it was my favourite at the time, you know. Uh, there was a, there was another time where I got up in the morning, Christmas morning, and there was like a path laid out with little sticky notes with wee arrows on them, you know, and leading all the way around the house until eventually it led to my present, which was a wee portable TV, which again, this was the 80s, it was great having a TV in my own room. Yeah. Um, And then there was another time when I was very young, I remember, um, I got up and there was like a Lego tractor type of thing uh, and it had been built up and it wasn't the fact that it was a tractor or Lego, that wasn't what it was, it was the fact that I knew that my dad had stayed up for hours building that, you know, I knew that he had stayed up, he must have stayed up all night building that tractor and that's what I really liked about that, that, that my God, he must have, he, he stood up all night just to build, just to build this tractor, you know, out of Lego. And it was, it was just, these are the things that I think of at Christmas. But I don't have any bad memories of Christmas. Um, I mean, it's, I, I've heard a few bad things, but I don't actually have bad memories. I'm quite lucky there. I don't have bad memories yeah. of Christmas. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, my, my father would absolutely relate to you, um, you know, because there was five of us and we loved Lego. Uh, my my dad has has flashbacks, Vietnam flashbacks, to <laughs> ha- having to build princess castles out of Lego, or, or God forbid, when the Harry Potter Lego came along, having to build Hogwarts. Oh jeez! Um, and then the next morning, getting no credit for it because it was Because <laughs> it was it. Santa Claus, I um, I. But then I I, then, I I knew it was my dad. You know what I mean? But I I, I but it was also, Santa. And also um, that that we would obviously break it apart within minutes, you know. So so like um, it couldn't even Aye. appreciate his 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 own uh, artwork. But can <laughs> I say with regards to your you're talking about, you know, the the cut out words from uh, uh, Fairy Tale of New York? Can I Aye. ask um, our, our resident homosexual Philip um, as as to <laughs> as to whether words like faggot are unacceptable. See, bef- think- see before he answers, see before he answers, can I just say, I love the fact that I didn't know he was gay. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not, I, I hate, I hate no, I'm not, I'm they not, make it obvious. I, I'm, I'm not off. gay. I'm not gay, I'm ex-gay. <laughs> I used to be gay. <laughs> can I, can I, um, can I request, You Philip, used to that, be gay. Can, can I request, Philip, that, that, um, if it is not offensive that you pass on our feelings at the next big gay meeting. <laughs> well, that's, so, a, that's, that's, that's a point. I'm, I, made, I made this exact same point on Twitter the other day. To the, to the radio station that edited the song, I, I said that I was a gay man, right? And I said, I, I, I'm a gay man who can take a fully erect eight-inch penis up my ass. So, so those words obviously hurt my feelings. You know what I mean? How can you how can you take that and yet not take the word faggot? It's pathetic, it's ridiculous. 
I think Bye, most it's of also... the time it's people being offended on behalf. Yes, yeah. yes, it is. So I, it is. So, so I was. Yeah. So I, I have restricted access to Twitter for a week now because today <laughs> I asked. To, because today I asked somebody if he's retarded. So oh, I geez. just. <laughs> They so, never say the R word on Twitter. Yeah, so maybe, so maybe I'm the wrong person to ask if the word faggot is okay or not. But I, I, I think the whole song is, it's a love letter to, like, rough equality because I mean they like, like it, it's. It respects all the characters in the songs for being mm -hmm. who they are, and by banning the words, you're actually taking away their dignity of of just being part of society. I no, I, you know I what else it is? It's bloody middle class because, like, yeah. that song is about two working class people exactly expressing their feelings in a working class way, and then middle yeah. class people clutching their pearls, going. No, but they can't possibly use that. But it's that a beautiful language. song. It's a beautiful it song. It's yeah. a, it's a, it's almost a, a love song, yeah. and and it's the kind of thing that couples would call each other slut and faggot. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it's not it's not like it's not like the uh, Kirsten McCall is saying I don't like gay people. She's not even thinking about gay people. She's just using a slur. You know, it could have yeah. been any slur. And it just works for the song, and it's just so disappointing that that it it was perfectly acceptable for thirty five years or round about that, and now it's not acceptable anymore. What? Look, I I, t I tell you one thing. When I I'm, I live in a tiny village in Scotland, and before I moved to this village, <laughs> there were there were. There were, yeah, the only gay in the village. Um, I, was were, going, I was just <laughs> going to say that. I was just going <laughs> no, to say that. <laughs> no, we've got quite a few lesbians and gays here in the village. But when I moved here, before I moved here, somebody actually uh, wrote an article about my backstory because I used to do porn in the in the uh, Sunday Mail. So before I moved to this village, everybody knew about my past, and I was like, oh my god, this is going to be awful. And the first mm -hmm. day I arrived here. I went to the pub and somebody local said, where are you from? And I said, from Germany. And they said, oh, so you're the gay porn star. And then they started <laughs> making, and then they immediately started making jokes, but with me in yeah, on, yes. a, on a working class level. And I just like, I just joined the banter. And because of that, I immediately knew I'm at home here. I, 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 I'm accepted because they didn't tiptoe around me. And that's what's being lost. It's, it's like, yeah. if, if we are afraid to treat each other normally, then we- Well, I mean- we, I, we I, our, our, in our connection. I'm a massive proponent of what Philip is talking about, um, you know, about, about having, you know, that, that more relaxed attitude. Um, because I mean, what what feminists are essentially doing when they ban those kinds of songs is that they are showing um, that they don't actually understand what the song is about. That they yeah. that they all they all they did was hear certain you know triggering words or whatever, and they immediately uh, toss the whole thing away as evil. Whereas they have missed the the crucial points, like Goodfellow was talking about. It's about cross culturalism. It's about uh, gender equality. It's about love and romance and difficult times. There's a lot of really positive messages, but they can't see that. They can only see these words, and um, yeah. it, it reminds me greatly of you know my best friend, um, who has been you know my best friend for 15 years. Um, and uh, you know, I would be I would be totally lost without her, and she knows that. I've I've said that to her many times. I've told her that she's actually not my friend anymore. Um, she's necessary. That's that's her that's her designation now. That a friend is someone you can fall out with. You know, I can't fall out with her. She's just necessary now. Um, and uh, you know, but I give her a ridiculously hard time. You know, when I phone her up. Um, I I call her all manner of names and you know like make fun of anything and everything she says, um, but but I do it with love and endearment and and I and I intend to make her laugh and I do succeed in making her laugh and anybody who just read a transcript of what we said essentially the lyrics of what I said to her 
would think that you know I I had nothing but disdain for her. Um, yeah. they'd, they'd be missing the key factor that um, she is she's the outside of my immediate family. She's the person I care about most. Um, and and to be honest, I think something crucial here that um, they would never admit to is that when you can you know say insults to your friends and whatever and have a laugh it relieves so much tension you know that otherwise would build up in resentment when you can when you when your friend does something that annoys you and you can turn around and say to them by the way you're a dick like that that removes so much of the the animosity that would otherwise destroy a friendship um if you're not allowed to say those kinds of things and, and yeah. Um, and I actually, uh, I have this thing that I talk about with her, which is that um, if she really pisses me off, um, but I don't actually want to um, sort of get particularly angry about it, what I will do is get really angry about it, like stupidly angry about it, over the top, this is the end of the world type angry about it, so that um, essentially it's, it's ridiculous. Like whatever it is, it's a tiny thing that she said or whatever, um, and I will I will go bananas about it to the point that it's so overblown and ridiculous. All it does is make her laugh. Um, mm. But she will she will pick up on the fact that she did annoy me because you know because because I am expressing anger. Um, yeah. Whereas the the ridiculousness of the rage um, means that she's she's not offended by it. So. Um, by, by being able to use those kinds of words, by being able to show uh, frustration and anger but, but not actually mean literally what you're saying, um, means that essentially how I describe it is that she saw me fire a shot but she wasn't hit by it because I deliberately fire it in such a way that she'll understand what I'm trying to say but, but in the end it will just make her laugh. Yeah, yeah. I, I, just, um, I just want to reveal my identity, if any of you don't know what my identity is. Yeah. I have been keeping it from everybody, I haven't managed to come out in, in my village that I am in fact a gay female transvestite trapped in a man's body. Hey! Mike, I mean, what, what Mike, they want I, I, <laughs> Mike I'm actually gr glad you, you finally said it, because we all knew it, and we... <laughs> We, but we wanted to, but we wanted to give you the chance to actually, like, say for yourself. Yeah. We don't want, yeah. didn't want to push you. Thank you so much for your trust. Can, can, well, can, I, can I take my hat off then? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, well, actually, Mike, we talk about it uh, extensively behind your back. It's the only thing. Like, we we get together and we discuss uh, what we like to call Big Gay Michelle. Um, <laughs> you know, so, so, so um, it's it's nice that you've finally come out because maybe you can join us in those bitching sessions. Yeah, you could, you could, yes. But make sure you get all the sections. It's got to be gay, female, and transvestite, and, 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 and body. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Otherwise, why would I look like this? <laughs> exactly. And why would I fancy women if I wasn't a transvestite, gay? trapped in a man's body well it's, it's like it's like what billy conley was saying and you know i mean he would probably be banned for saying this but he would he was saying that he picked up um about years and years ago that was all about the lesbian experience and um and you know he's sort of he's very very serious and he's he's like and it was like and it was in that moment that i realized that i was a lesbian you know i was reading that and i was like i've got nothing wrong with that at all you know, so like, you know, stuff like that, just, you know, they, they have no sense of humour, they have they have nothing but um, nanny state policing language. Okay. Um, and, and then they're surprised when it backfires on them. You know, the, I mean, yeah. like recently there was um, quite a few uh, left-leaning Twitter. Question, 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 because we're going into politics again. Can I uh -oh. tell my Christmas story? Sorry, Philip. Please. Yes, go ahead. I want my Christmas story. I want my Christmas story next. You, you already told your Christmas story, didn't you? That, that you're big No, you help. didn't. Which one? <laughs> what story did I tell? Oh, okay, so, sorry, Mike. You go first. You go first. Okay, so um, I'm one of those people who never really liked Christmas. It was like when I was a little kid, the... Um, 
it was like this big build up if you're not a good boy then father christmas both come and then and then we had these traumatic events where you had to sort of open these presents and pretend you like them and then i remember <laughs> having to write these on christmas day i used to have to write to my auntie saying thank you for my two and six postal order you're not really old enough to know what a two and six post order is but it wasn't quite what you wanted anyway then i got married and had children it was quite nice for a bit and then it was the marriage was going wrong and christmas was a bit of a nightmare it's sort of like this oh, it's all i wanted was a family christmas oh. anyway then we split up and we started to go me and the girls started to go to my sisters who had four kids and we had the best christmases ever because wow. it was a big house full of people. They had a big house, you know, and a big turkey and a big supper. And, you know, there's always somebody to do some stupid thing with. And the kids would put on some stupid play. And I thought, yeah, thank good for breakup. Breakup was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is, is, is this now a show that advocates for a divorce? I, I'm sure. Why not? MGTOW. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A, a MGTOW Christmas. Uh, by the way, um, Elizabeth, could you please change the letters behind you to Leon for Mike Buchanan's four-year-old grandson? Um, thank, you thank you, Philip. Thank is, you. Uh, is, is David coming back? Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know if it was his connection. Because uh, he left rather quickly, so I, I assumed it was his connection that he would return, but he hasn't... He hasn't um, been... El Elizabeth, could you check if David Eggins is trying to come back on? Yeah, but he isn't, because he would have popped okay. up. It would have popped up. No. Okay, he's off, he's often on a bad connection and popping in and out, isn't he? Yeah. Philip. So are you ready? Are you ready for my stories? So Go. ready. Go for it. I, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say two. Um, first of all, my, our Christmases, our family Christmases were absolutely amazing. In Germany, you actually um, ha get the presents on the 24th. So we celebrate on the 24th. And we were not allowed in the living room uh, till like six o'clock in the afternoon when it was uh, dark. And my father, he would decorate the Christmas tree. So before that, the room wasn't decorated with the Christmas tree. And back then, you would still have real candles and you actually had the sparklies. So, and my brother and me, we were sitting on the, on the stairs going down to the, to the living room. And we were just sitting there in our best suits as, as kids. And then my parents would ring a bell. And that would mean that Christ child was there de delivering the gifts and we would like storm down into the living room and we would open the door and all the lights were out and it was just the candles on the Christmas tree and the sparklies and it, the sparklies were just all over the tree and it was sparks flying in the air. It was really beautiful and so many presents under the Christmas tree. Um, and I have to say it was really, really magical. And what my my parents did there was was absolutely wonderful. And once I have children, I would like to recreate that in some way without the sparklies, because I think my plastic tree would just disappear <laughs> <laughs> with, with the whole building, with the whole house. Yep. So these were, oh, just a second. A glass of wine is coming. Thank you very much. Um, See, then, I, then I would have known. See, I didn't know before. <laughs> But drinking wine, now I know. Right, okay, okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> Good Funny. Thing, Philip, would you like the rest of us to leave? Whiskey! <laughs> um, can I, can I uh, say, Philip, that I would like to disagree that you actually had a, a good uh, childhood in Germany? Um, that, uh, from what I'm aware of, in Germany, um, there is uh, Krampus, who's like, it was, it was like the opposite of Santa. Um, no, nope. no, nope. is... we didn't have Krampus. <laughs> we didn't have, uh, we didn't have Krampus, and Krampus actually doesn't come on Christmas. He actually comes on on the sixth of uh, December together with with Saint Nicholas. He's the dark shadow of Saint Nicholas, not of Santa Claus. But no, the cultures like... mixed that up. 
no, of, of course, I'm, 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 I'm sort of, you know, being um, like hyperbolic here. But for anybody yeah. that's, that's that's not um, aware, um, like uh, Krampus is is like the 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 nega Santa, um, and uh, you know, for us, essentially, it's bad enough the idea: be a good boy and you'll get presents. And if you're not, you know, you don't get presents. That that is sort of like incentive enough in Germany. If you are good, you get presents. If you're bad, you get eaten by a demon. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, I, and I'm kind of wondering, why did people not think that this was going to lead to the Holocaust? Like, of course, <laughs> if you tell children that you know a demon is going to come to get them, like, <clears throat> naughty, like the country's going to be fucked up, right? Yeah. Like. <laughs> Come on, all the German fairy tales are gruesome yeah. and traumatizing. <laughs> They're all horrible. They're all horrible. So, but the second story, the sec, and that's um, last year. So my father remarried, and now I've got two brothers, two new brothers, and they have two children. One of them is one and a half, and the other one is two and a half. And so last year, for the first time, I got to play Santa. Aww. And that was very special for me uh, because also I became like the real uncle. Uh, and I disappeared out of the back, back door and I, I said, oh, I have to go somewhere. I have to do something. So they didn't know it was me. And then I was putting on, on the costume. I put on a, a fake beard. And I was actually really scared that I would scare them because they're still quite small. And I thought if a stranger comes into the house uh, with a deep voice, with a deep voice and with a big um, yeah, bag of presents, but they were mesmerized and to them it was magic and I was Santa Claus. So that was that was my second best Christmas experience. Did you, um, did, did you put like a pillow up your jumper or whatever? Or, or were you a particularly in shape Santa? Oh, I was I was Muscle Santa. I was the gay. I was, I was the, Santa. I was the gay porn Santa. You were, you, were, you, were, you were Santa who had been training for that long anticipated fight with the Easter Bunny. You know, like the, <laughs> the Easter Bunny had called Mrs. Claus a bitch one too many times, and like <laughs> now Santa was getting ready to kick his arse. I'm just gonna take the bunny by its ears and I'm just gonna bam, like whack it, or whack it around. Exactly. So, so these were all our positive stories of Christmas. Some uh, trauma traumatizingly sad. Sorry, Elizabeth? Yeah, no, I've got another one. Mike Bell, have you got another <laughs> one? I do. No. It's, 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 uh, it's, you do yours first because mine isn't quite. Christmas story. Okay, but Mike Buchanan wants to speak to. He's having some connection problems. Um, um, thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, can I can I just say you are totally the best leader of Justice Men and Boys as there's ever been. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, sorry. I I, I I I have a poor connection here on the French Riviera. Um, <laughs> can, I, can, I just, can I just ask you, can I just ask you um, Mike, why are you not in me. your Mike, Mike, why are you not in your Scottish um, uh, ha house mansion. You're in mansion? No, that, that that's my principal summer residence, Mike. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Can I just um, check when you said that Elizabeth is is the greatest leader the party's ever had? That the party has only ever had two leaders and that you were the other one, so Liz really is not living up to stiff competition. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> you eccentric are you, are you gonna? Uh, are you going to insult everybody this episode? Are we all just uh, waiting? That's um, why he doesn't show his face, so that we can't uh, get at him. Yeah, it's, um, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to tear off this avatar and reveal that I was Krampus the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. So, 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 I mean, I've only had like eighty percent of the audio. It's been, it's been awful here. Um, but, but I, I'd just like to say, um, we, we um, but most of the people in this conversation were in the last ICMI, um, and next year, um, I want everyone in this conversation to be in the ICMI. So that includes you, Judith. Yay! Thank you. 
<laughs> and we, we, we already we already have Ava, Eve, Ava and Eva from the Netherlands. So um, it'd be lovely to have you at that. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Very good. And and with that, um, I wish you all. Click, clink, Elizabeth, clink. 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 Everyone with it with an alcohol problem. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, and, Mike, and, and thank um, you so much for organizing ICMI this year. Hey, make it drinking, pleasure. make it drinking wine, by the way. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, th 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 thank you all, and, and here's to a wonderful 2021. Thank you. To a wonderful thank 2021. You. Merry Christmas, mate. Just, Merry before Christmas. You, just before you go, I just want you to, sh to share my adage for the 21st of December 2020 because it's now the second day. From now on, the days get longer and woke gets weaker. Hey! hey. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Yep. With that, I bid you all good night. You're a wonderful <laughs> people. And um, I look forward to working with you all next year. Well, most of you, most of you. Most of you. Good night, Mike. Good night. There is definitely a feminist gremlin in Mike's connection because every time he said something important, it disconnected the sound for a second. <laughs> no, I, I, I never say something important, but it's very kind anyway. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 So, yeah, my my other mem. <laughs> oh no, Marie, it's passed on. Ring memory. <laughs> what? It's like you, you, you got the stagnation virus next. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. My other, my other memory is it's something that happens every year. Um. At our family home, and it's that Santa comes, and he doesn't just leave presents. He leaves a trail of mud up the steps. So I've got a memory of every Boxing Day trying to like scour mud off the <laughs> stairs. Wow! And I it's like every year I'm watching the kids' dad doing this, going like, no, no, <laughs> really. But does he? It's not even that muddy outside because he like he goes and finds a patch of mud to do it. You know, even if it's quite dry, he'll make sure. And um, but I I think it adds to the magic. So. You know, that's cool. Kudos. The kids will always remember mum yeah. getting up in the morning going, I can't believe Santa's done this again. My <laughs> God. That's so nice. Do you know why uh, to, uh, the day after is called Boxing Day? Yes. Well, I know the real reason, but I don't know your joke reason. <laughs> no, no, it, it isn't a joke reason. I was only going to tell you the real reason. So you it was, it's, it's, not, it's nothing to do with boxing, it's because of all the boxes. You have to put them away and throw them in the rubbish and all the, the boxing that, that Are you serious? I, I thought I thought there was a Mike Tyson marathon on every <laughs> No. <laughs> it's nothing to do with boxing at all. Uh, it's it's sorry, I, the way I understand it is that traditionally in some parts of England, Christmas presents were given on the day after Christmas and they were referred to as your Christmas box. Okay. And uh, so huh? you went to deliver your Christmas boxes on Boxing Day. Oh, and, I, uh, I, I, I was told I, I, to do I hadn't thing. heard that until uh, until I was somewhere, uh, you know, and people were referring to it as uh, uh, as to what they were going to get so and so for their Christmas box. And I thought, oh, oh, maybe some people do still call it that. Anyway, I, that's I, not funny or um, anything. So move on. <laughs> I, I was told that, that Boxing Day was was to do with. Um, you put like um, the leftovers or something into into boxes and and sometimes even maybe delivered them to like a homeless shelter or something. Interesting. Um, Judith, uh, do they do they call um, the day after Christmas Boxing Day in Canada? Yes. Yeah. Actually, yeah, it's the same thing. Boxing Day. There's Boxing Day sales everywhere, but not this year because of pandemic. Of course, they're gonna close down everything. Oh, we're not, we're not Christmas allowed to, we're not allowed two, to mention weeks. the pandemic. <laughs> Sorry? I said what, we're not what, allowed to mention the pandemic. You know, it's, it's, what? um, it's bad oh, pandemic sorry. rhythms. <laughs> it's, pandemic? Um, what pandemic? Yeah. <laughs> what? I don't know. 
Is it is it is is it possible that um, pandas and pandemics are related? Anybody? Oh, um, that would be oh, so cool. <laughs> that would pandas be so everywhere. cute. Yeah, that would be so much cuter. <laughs> pandas everywhere. <laughs> Go to a store. There's a random panda just in the store. I've I've got bamboo in my garden. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I do. I re- okay, so. Shall we shall we move on? So these were the positive uh, memories that we had of Christmas. Um, shall we move on to what we wish for the next year? Um, and don't go too much into details in regards to political. Obviously, we can talk about men's rights a little bit. But what do you wish for for next year? Uh, Elizabeth, I'm going to start with you. Oh, my goodness. Um... I've got a lot of work to get done personally, so I'm going to plan my year before I hit the new year and then get on my horse and achieve lots of things. Um, I would like to see a lot of universities just closing that whole, you know, I think that would be a good thing to come from this pandemic. But I would also like to see um, our freedoms and our civil liberties restored because I'm getting pretty concerned about the slide into authoritarianism that I see happening um, as a result of exploitation of the COVID crisis. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I didn't want to wear this hat, but Boris Johnson made me. It's, I couldn't... <laughs> <laughs> so Mike, what what's your what are your wishes your hopes for next year? Well, I'm I'm hoping to continue the very positive mental state I've been in since becoming. I'm I'm not MGTOW like some people are like sort of you know angry about it. I'm very just sort of happily single and having sort of made that clear decision. It's sort of. It's freed my life up, and, 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 and lots of things have improved. Particularly, strangely, my um, occasional bouts of um, uh, uh, quite bad heartburn is very healthy. Um, but uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to continue that sort of general positive state. Um, I'm, I think, probably by um, by the solstice, by, by the equinox on 21st of March. I hope to have made significant progress on the APPG either but it'll either be going or not going and then this would be this would be an APPG uh, in Parliament um, uh, MPs that are focused on men's issues yeah so like internal parliamentary um, group talking shop yep. and some of them are talking shops but others can be quite effective um, uh, and um, then uh, come the spring, come about April, um, I'm hoping that you know that this COVID thing will be, you know, at least moved up a bit. Maybe I could get the vaccine because what I really missed this year was going sailing, and I want to take my boat down to the southwest. Or, or I was planning a trip from um, from the Hamble River, which is near Southampton through past Dover up to Ramsgate um, and so I'd quite like to do that uh, but I'd also like to go back down to the West Country with it because for some reason I find sailing off the, a rocky coast somehow a deeply spiritual experience which I'll put a lot of effort into actually achieving. I, I can't quite explain why it is because I'm often out there on the sea with practically nobody else and then you know, tied up somewhere other than a harbour or just anchored somewhere, and I absolutely love it. So that's what I'm like. Can I, nice. can I just um, can I wish you the absolute best with that, Mike, and say that I'm so glad that you are feeling happy and feeling contented ever since having gone MGTOW, and that you say, you know, um, that you're not bitter about it. And, and for me, that's what, um, you know, true MGTOW should be. I mean, I mean, I admittedly, I, I don't know a huge amount about it, but but I, I've always felt that for those people who say that they are MGTOW, but linger um, and with bitterness and anger and resentment um, and, and uh, take it out on, unfortunately, um, 
sometimes on women, women who are not feminist, you know, just all women collectively. Uh, for me, that they, they haven't yet gone their own way because to go your own way is to free yourself from all of that. Yeah, I think that's right. I think the nice thing is that I am also free of bitterness of my ex-partner and ex-wife as well. But, you know, I think I was treated pretty badly and I was quite cut up, but I now, I I have no bitterness towards them at all, and uh, uh, I wish them well. Well, here's Good to you. you. I, I really hope that that, uh, that 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 goes exactly as you have planned. Good. Ju Judith, what are you, what do you wish for for next year? Well, obviously, for this stupid pandemic to be over, that would be nice. <laughs> I had a. I do go to what's called meetups. There's a meetup website and then people who like to do different activities can meet up together and then do the activities. And before the pandemic, I was telling myself, oh, I really like those meetups. You can just go and socialize with people, talk about different stuff and that's nice. And then pandemic happened and all of it stopped. Like my dose of socializing just disappeared. And it's not the same over Zoom or over online stuff i just i've always been pretty much a solitary person and a loner and i find myself like just missing having people around so if for the next year we could go back to some sort of normalcy that would be nice and on a personal note i am trying to write a book about feminism or more more so about anti-feminism to try to dispel all the myths there are surrounding more surrounding anti-feminism uh, anti and all that I, I think we get too much of a bad rep and i think things need to be cleared out so i'm trying to do that so hopefully this year all good stuff's gonna happen for everyone can i tell you a meetup my meetup story yeah sure i wanted to meet people to do stuff so i looked on, on meetup and there was this wonderful sounding one which says get off the sofa in in huntington which is just a few miles from well, that's fantastic exactly what the sort of people i want to want to get off the sofa and do something so i saw that they had their regular meeting in a um in a uh, garden center cafe so i went up there and found them all sitting on sofas <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome and that's why they, they went it wasn't the their sofa, sofa. They got off their sofas and went and sat on the sofas in the garden centre cafe. <laughs> that was it. Well, it's, it's one of those it's one of those occasions that you should have read the frame print, mate. I should have. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that. I think you're absolutely right, Judith. That um, anti-feminists get a bad rep, and it's it's yeah. no coincidence. Feminism is a is a, a horrible movement with a fabulous PR department, and, yeah. and they constantly slander us. Um, so that you can't disagree with feminism without being accused of misogyny. You know, and yeah. there's, there's nothing more dangerous than an ideology that believes that it is above being challenged. Yeah, um, and being criticized, yeah. Yeah. Um, nobody, no matter what side of the fence you're on, should be okay with that. You know, whether it's your, it's whether it's your political belief or not, you should always be open to, to challenging it because, you know, it, otherwise yeah. it can't improve. You know, like surely, yeah. Yeah. surely at least you want it to be at its best. And unless you're allowed to ask questions, it will never improve. Exactly. They're, they're so close minded. There's an assumption that they are right about everything. They know the right way to go about the world and no one's allowed to criticize that, which should be the opposite. Everyone should be able to criticize it. Yeah. That way we can look at the flaws and then fix the flaws. And that will make things better, not by obsessively holding on to your belief. That doesn't work. I have to say, I am, I'm incredibly optimistic when you see the number and quality of female people on our side, if you know what I mean. It's much harder for us to say anything. And, uh, and the fact that you women are st speaking up, if you like, on our behalf, I know it's on your behalf too, you know, is the most optimistic thing because you know, you're going to get away with it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, 
how many of us would even be here right now? Who, how many of us would have lasted if it wasn't for yeah. that woman? You know, if it was just guys, if, if every week it was a sausage party, how many of us would have given up? You know, it's, it's the no, fact I would, I would still be here. I wouldn't have given up. I wouldn't um, have given up. I, I am totally dependent on one woman. I would never have been here if it wasn't for one particular woman. Who? My mother. <laughs> I mean, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do appreciate the women that are in the movement, you know, and the, the early ones like Karen Strawn and stuff. So I, I'm not dismissing the women. I'm just saying, if it wasn't for the women, I would still be here. Absolutely, yeah. I, 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 I just... don't care. To me, to me, to me, women do a wonderful job, and I do see the difference between men and women. So I'm not gender blind, like color blind, but <laughs> I, I don't care. A great woman is a great woman. A great man is a great man. I I don't care. And I, to be honest, I think in part because of my bisexuality, I'm more I'm more equal equal than a lot of other people. I appreciate both. I don't have a bias to one gender. I appreciate yeah. people based on who they are. And women don't get a pussy pass from me. Neither do men. Well, actually, men sometimes do a little bit more, but. <laughs> Not for long. I, I think I think that's perfectly valid and, and fair what you're saying, Philip, and, and it's it's encouraging that you have that kind of resolve. Um, you know, but I, I can only speak for myself, but I do believe that I'm not alone when I say that um a lot of men, you know, because it's in our DNA, it's it's literally we've been bred for this over five million years, that we do need the acceptance of women and the encouragement of women and the love of women. Um and, and for a lot of us, if we were in this um, you know, with only men and we didn't have that acceptance and love from a lot of very intelligent, very kind, very gracious women in the movement, um, a lot of us would lose heart, we'd lose faith because it's, you know, I, I, I said to my best friend and, and you know, Mike, Mike said his mother, my, my mother is very supportive of this as well, um, I said to my best friend that um, women are crucial in the anti-feminist men's rights movement. Um, because men have been uh, bred for five million years to fight anyone, any enemy you like on any battlefield imaginable, but the one person they will not fight is women. Yep. So, so they need women to do that. Like yep. women, women are um, pivotal because men, it's it's against their nature to pick fights with women. Yeah, um, not me. Yep. I, I just want to use this opportunity to say that one of the... I, before I started my Twitter about two and a half years ago, I was already commenting all over the internet. And I saw a lot of those women in the men's rights movement that sort of inspired me, like Karen Strogan, strong opinion, like Shoe on the Head, the, the YouTuber, also strong opinion. And I'm, I mean this sincerely, and I'm not looking to suck up to anyone, but Elizabeth Hobson was one of the person I looked up to back then. I'm like, wow, nah, this nah. is one of those smart <laughs> ladies. <laughs> So I just have to say that this is actually the first time we've met. So I'm like having a little girl crush moment. So. <laughs> it's reciprocal. Thank watch? you for inviting me. Can like, I watch? We, we, um, <laughs> we finally... Judith, 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 Judith uh, I, I hope you know that Elizabeth has an OnlyFans account. <gasps> Send me the link! Wait. We finally found someone who respects Elizabeth. It's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> <laughs> so, so ex eccentric head, what is your hope for the next year? Well, can I ask Goodfellow to go first? Because he went last last time, and I think it's unfair if he goes last again. What, me? Hey. Uh, I, I, I just, I mean, I'm just um, completely focused on my, on my son. And that's uh, that's just personal, but um, I just hope he keeps doing well in school. Uh, you know, and maybe figures out what he wants to do with his life, you know, because he's now 12. Um, I mean, just, just the other day, Tuesday there, um, well, that was yesterday, uh, yesterday, um, it was the last day of school, and I said to him, uh, you can stay off, it's fine, you don't need to go, you can stay off, and oh, I want to go, he said, I said, well, why do you want to go, it's the last day of school, you're not going to be doing anything, you're just going to be watching videos, I want to get 100% attendance. 
Oh. Now that's what I'm yeah. that's what I'm I'm happy about, you know. Um, wow. So I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping he keeps that up. He's going to be a teenager next year, mm-hmm. you know. And I know that's when things start to change. But you know, I'm just hoping there. So that's that's what my focus is on uh, in terms of my activism, if that's what you want to call it. I'm just going to keep having a laugh and just you know having fun with it because because um, I believe that if you don't laugh, you'll cry. So may as well laugh, you know. So that that's just that's just my, my future. Uh, COVID isn't even a thought, to be honest with you. I mean, um, I walked through Morrison's today, and all honestly, almost everybody had a mask on except me, you know. And I just I just felt sorry for them. I felt yeah. sorry for all the people with masks because I just thought, my God, that the BBC and all the other news outlets have absolutely scared you shitless. You you are you're terrified because of what they told you. You know, and and good fella, can I ask you? Because I, I do the same thing when I go to Tesco, I'm not wearing a mask, but I stay away from people because I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. Oh no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah. I, w- I wouldn't intentionally, you know, cough on people or breathe on people. But yeah. but and 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 if anybody came up and said, "Excuse me, could you put a mask on?" I would. I've always got one in my pocket. You know, if that's the rules, okay, fine. But I'm not going to put one on until they tell me I need to put one on. But I, so when I go to Tesco and I had that the last three times I went and I only go once every two weeks because I live so far away. I have such a wonderful time with the ladies on the checkout. (laughs) We have just the biggest laugh and uh, it feels like they're really happy to see somebody's face. And we we have banter and smile and and they, they just, they all of a sudden they become humans and they have their plastic shields so they they yes. don't have to wear a mask and we just have a really nice conversation sometimes for three minutes and well, if i if i was to guess right this is just a guess and and the women on here can tell me right but mask wearing a mask is following the rules and women tend to like men who don't follow the rules <laughs> so when they see you without a mask they immediately think oh my god you know, and they're, they're, I'm not saying they're attracted, I'm just saying they're, you know, they're more open to liking you, in a sense, because they know you're not one of these people who are just going to follow the I, rules. I, I, have to say, I have to say, these were older women, and to be honest, I think they were already at the stage where they uh, were more mature. I, I think mm-hmm. that the fear factor, the fear factor, is more in younger and middle-aged women and i think that the older women Maybe. they're actually a bit more mature and it, it feels like they're just happy that somebody is friendly and that they can <laughs> have a nice conversation what's in the mind of all the women philip <laughs> pardon mike you seem to, you're saying what women think and i think that's a bit presumptuous <laughs> uh, no i i see i have a shop i have a shop and in my shop, I offered people during the whole pandemic that they don't have to wear masks. And it was with uh, very few exceptions, the women that uh, kept the masks on and the, the men that took the masks off. And um, even though men are more likely to die, and it's not because they don't wear masks, it's because mm-hmm. of genetics. Um, women, and that is that is proven women are more anxious than men overall. Uh, it's a personality trait and it's very important because for, for child protection, it's an important trait. Um, and I think that it, it feels to me that the women, the working class women, and it, I think it's important that they're working class, the working class women in the Tesco, working at the checkout, they, we're just very happy to have banter and have a human connection <laughs> without any fear. And I'm I'm not saying that all women, young women are like this. It's just my experience and it's mm-hmm. a theory. I'm not saying that I'm right. Can I, can I just say like, um, like it's true that we do, uh, you know, MRAs and stuff like that. Um, do you discuss the differences between the genders and, and perhaps a lot of the men try to um, you know, understand like theories and, and um, 
correlations about women's behaviours and you were saying it's it's a little bit uh, presumptuous, Mike, but I would say that at the very least, um, we do it in the company of other women, you know, who can speak up and tell us we're talking bullshit if they think so. The, like the, the, our counterparts in the feminist community don't ask men's opinion when they make assumptions about men. Well, let's, well, That's let's true. Women, then. Let's see what the women have to say. I agree. Feminist assumes a lot of things about men. One of the reasons they have so many of those believe about men, it's because they absolutely don't know anything about them. They just assume that men are evil and rapists and misogynists all the time. It's, it's, it's really weird, this, this idea that, you know, it kind of, like, I, I sort of wish, um, you know, I, I know I, you know, it's, it's never going to happen, but I sort of wish that, you know, um, the, the whole world could just have this sort of like five, five minute um, vision all at once, you know, some, like some kind of miraculous thing where we all got a glimpse or into a parallel universe of what it would be like, of what it would truly look like if men did exercise their power without restraint towards women. Um, because because women couldn't do anything about it. Women would be enslaved, you know, they would be oppressed, they would be dominated and there would be nothing they could do about it. Um, you know, and I wish that we could all just have that vision so that we could look at our world and say, well, clearly that's not what's going on. You know, because when when I'm in co a conversation with feminists and they say, um, oh, men are abusive and they are oppressive and they are dominant and they do want to suppress women's feelings and opinions and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, they don't. And they're like, oh, yeah, how do you know? And I'm like, because we're having this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> if men wanted to oppress you, you wouldn't be having this conversation. Yep. The fact that feminism has um, been for a hundred years should be proof that men don't want to oppress them. Well, to be about to be honest, Ed, I think I think, and you said that earlier. I think men can't because biologically we can't hate women. There is something biologically for most men to love and adore women and also be open to, in the worst case scenario, to be open to manipulation of women. So when a woman cries, it's very difficult for men to continue being mean to a woman. And that's the power of women. So I, I, I don't know if that could ever happen. Uh, yes, we see your thumbs up. No, I said... Uh, but I completely agree, it, it, it can't happen because it's not who we are and I just wish yeah. that we could get it out of our system because it, we, we sort of live a duality where we pretend that reality is about men hating women and everybody indulges this fantasy including men. Men you know, are like, oh yes, we're very oppressive, very dominating, we hate you so much. Is that, is that what you want to hear? Is that okay? Yeah. Um, eccentric, eccentric head. Since you're talking, what's your wish for the future? Um, well, to be honest, I am. I'm kind of caught uh, in a bit of a dilemma because as much as I, I hate this pandemic and desperately want it to end, I can't deny the uh, the fact that it has kept me out of university and that everything has been online. Um, it hasn't. It hasn't prevented me from doing work. We've still had. You know seminars and stuff but it's, it's all been online and the fact that i haven't had to look my gender studies teacher in the the eye for over a year is is a real blessing um so so i am i am not looking forward to having to be in her presence again um you know so, so i i do want it to end but I must admit, there's some small part of me that um, enjoys the lockdown as it as it uh, is prolonged. Um, so I, I apologise for that selfishness. Um, I, can I can I just say something to that? Because I, I think it's incredibly brave that you chose this path and that you are in the lion's den, facing your enemy pretty much every day. Uh, I don't think I would be able to do that. I was in a similar situation where I had a teacher um, that I opposed, like spiritually opposed. And every time I went to that training course, it was for becoming a massage therapist, um, I was sweating. Like I would, every time I went to, to class, I 
felt like I had to emotionally prepare pre prepare myself for a fight and my anxiety level just went way up and I so so I think what you're doing is very brave and I hope that you know when to quit if it harms you too much because it, it's a real fight it's a real fight yeah absolutely um I mean, I'm, I'm gathering, um, you know, extensive knowledge of what it's like to be in this kind of thing so that I can, once this is over, break it down and, and you know, write essays and, and make videos and stuff like that explaining exactly what they teach. Because that, you know, that thing that always comes back is educate yourself, educate yourself. Well, yeah. I, well I have literally put myself at their, uh, at their mercy. And the thing is, I didn't, I didn't choose gender studies, um, you know, out of some sort of martyrdom. Um, I actually chose uh, gender studies because I, I am actually really good at sociology, and I have a genuine fascination with with gender. Um, you know, which is why I'm here uh, to begin with. And the thing is, if it, if it wasn't so heavily politicised, if it wasn't um, feminist dogma, I would be having a great time because this is exactly what I want to learn about. It's just that we're not learning, we're being indoctrinated. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so I, I um, a, a, a class a couple of weeks ago, um, I put up, uh, we, we were discussing um, women in prison and uh, my lecturer was essentially um, suggesting that any crime that women commit, so like domestic violence, um, it will be in self-defense. Any time that they steal anything, it will be because of desperation due to things like the wage gap. You know, they only steal out of necessity. They are not just, you know, like um, thieves by nature or whatever. Like, so basically she was absolving en masse every female criminal everywhere. And she yeah. even went uh, on to say that um, when it comes to petty crimes like shoplifting, women are punished more in the justice system. Um, you know, and I couldn't let that go. So um, I wrote uh, back because there's like a, a chat box for the whole class. She speaks and she's on camera, but everybody else just has a kind of shared chat box. And I wrote back, um, men are twice as likely to be incarcerated for the same crime, yep. even with the same criminal record. Um, and uh, for the first time in the uh, the 10 or so seminars we'd had, she said, I want a source for that. <laughs> you know, so people, people have been coming forward with anecdotes. My granny told me, my best friend said, I once had this happen. Um, and she had been validating it as though you know it was it was uh, contributing to the the discussion, whereas I came forward with a, a counter argument, and she immediately said, "I want a source." And I was lucky that I knew off the top of my head that this source came from um, a woman called Sonia Starr at the Michigan Law School in America. So I wrote Professor Sonia Starr, Michigan Law School, and she said, "Not good enough. I want a Harvard reference." Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is which is the type of reference you provide in an essay um you know it's um, uh, as if had, 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 just uh, just a moment because uh mike he said that he has to go at nine ish uh mike could we get another 15 minutes for you and then we're gonna end this part of the um of the podcast together and uh, then we let you go into the ether. Perfect. I'll do that too then. I'll have to go too. Okay. So, um, uh, had so, so finish, finish, you. finish your part. I'm going to finish my part. And I think then we're going to finish. Um, Look at the snow. I, oh, well, wow. Sorry. Sorry you're lucky. Wow. Lucky. Lucky. Very lucky. Snowy in Montreal. Woo. Um, you know, basically, uh, look at the darkness. Look at the darkness. <laughs> you're, luck you're lucky. You're lucky okay. for the snow, but you're not lucky that you're in Montreal. So it's like you know. Oh, oh my God! Man. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Mike, you wanted to say something. Well, I think one thing about the lock. I was just thinking what Hat was saying, positive about the lockdown, is um, 
that I don't think we would have gender disparity in the UK without the lockdown. Because Absolutely. it happened at the beginning of May, and the only reason that you had all that time was because you were locked down. I would never have met you other than by a phone call. And except exactly. For the, and everything, practically everything that I know about uh, Ben's rights movement, or well, not, you know, a huge percentage of what I've done and what I've learned is as a direct result of lockdown and, and, and being forced onto Zoom meetings. Um, and uh, I'm so sorry, of, Mike. Uh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just as an aside, my, my daughter's not very, uh, she doesn't really like socialize, she can't socialize very well. And uh, when the lock, we were talking about lockdown, she said, What's everybody going to, what's everybody making a fuss about? Now I don't have to have an excuse for not talking to people. Um, and, and then later on, when it was the rules of six, she said, Six, that's far too many. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, sorry, sorry, is it okay? Go ahead. If, uh, I, I, I finished the last little bit, which is basically just, sure. um, you know, so in in front of you know thirty other students for the first time, um, she demanded a, a a source for the information that she hasn't asked of any other student, um, and I gave her the professor and the university that wasn't good enough for her. She wanted a Harvard reference, as though people carry them around. Um, and luckily enough, uh, I was actually able to provide that for her. So I, I, I put in the paper, the university, the year, all of that. Um, and she responded with, okay, we can take a look at that at some point, Let, moving on. Um, you know, so, so that's, um, you know, and, and my heart rate was through the roof because obviously I was put on the spot uh, in front of these other students. I wasn't, you know, literally in front of them, but, um, it's it's the the bias that they they treat you with that you can agree with them with the most um anecdotal evidence of just you know one time my mommy said this to me um and that counts as evidence yeah. whereas uh if i if i give a you know a, a counter argument with a lecturer and a, a school um that that's not good enough um so I, I wish I think we I think we all wish we were Jordan Peterson who can yeah. just are, 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 like make such strong arguments that yeah. you just like silence the opposition. It's it's but, funny how it, it's funny how they'll claim that um men and women are different and that's why there are are different reasons they commit crimes. And then when you say okay so men and women are different Maybe that's why there are more male CEOs and politicians. They then go, no, 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 wait a minute. Men and women are the same. And it's like, well, <laughs> well which one is it? Are, are they yeah. different or are they the same? Which one is it? You know, and they, they never they never come to a, an agreement on what it is. Are they the same or are they different? It just, it's whenever it suits them. Well, it's, it's like that thing about um, there, there are not as many female CEOs because they're being kept out, even though the, the sexes are exactly the same. But there are mm -hmm. not as many female sewage workers because the sexes pursue di pursue different things, and that's down to free will. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, it's it's just yeah. Basically, um, I have been fighting all year, and if 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 the grounds were even, I would be more than happy to. Um, to fight my corner to this woman in front of the class. I'm, I'm not afraid of that, but I have the extra, um, the, the difficulties of, you know, A, they want to listen to her, they didn't pay to listen to me, so obviously I have to be very select in what I say, and that B, um, sh like she and, and even her boss have it in for me, to the point that, um, you know, uh, last year she made complaints about how she found me intimidating and threatening. Um, and I, 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 I said, you know, I, I said um, to her, her boss and then later on her boss's boss, when I got called before a Senate disciplinary committee, I said, what did I threaten her with? And they said, oh no, you didn't threaten her, but you made her feel threatened. Um, yeah. And, and, yep. And it's kind of like, listen, you know, I I have mental health issues. I had to go to therapy. Um, if someone feels something uh, that is not based in reality, 
that is at best an overreaction. At worst, it's a mental health problem. I yeah. can't. About <laughs> You know, I can't, I can't say, oh, you feel threatened, that's fine, I will change my behaviour based on that. Um, because the therapists, uh, you know, like, they wouldn't have uh, accepted that from me. When I felt feelings that were not based in reality, they told me, you're being irrational, you need to change. You need yeah. to work harder, you need to base your feelings in reality. Um, you know, so what this culture of um validating people who say that they feel afraid or they feel blah 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 what it's doing is is actually um encouraging mental health problems rather than persuading people to put the effort in to um you know to, to better themselves they're saying no the whole world should change based on your irrational opinions <laughs> well, can i can i, I chime in mean, there yeah, and I was wondering, Eccentric, whether you ever responded to her making a statement by asking her for a Harvard reference. Yeah. Um, I, I would love to, um, if it wasn't for the fact that I know that um, it would go down like a lead balloon. Yeah. Uh, so if, I, if, I were, if I were to be cheeky and confrontational like that, then I, I would just get called before her boss again. Because, um, yeah. you know, I, the, the, the list of complaints that they gave me that, that she had raised were were obscene you know so for example um uh i was advised uh, by a former lecturer who who was very supportive of me um i was advised that when i went into this class ask for a meeting with her um and explain your position very calmly and say i'm going to disagree now and then but i truly believe in equality i'm 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 not a misogynist i i think that equality is incredibly important I just don't necessarily agree with feminism. Um, so I asked for that meeting. I was very calm and clear with her. Um, so she went to her boss and said, I'm afraid to be on my own with him. If ever I have to speak to him again, someone else has to be present. Well, that's good for you then. Yeah. Well, yeah, it depends on who the other person is. But yeah. Well, but, but still, I, I mean, to be honest, for, for if, if there wasn't another person in the room, she could always make up shit about you and could misrepresent things. That's why it's also always important to record whatever was said in the meeting. It's, it's really important. Absolutely. Um, okay, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna say real quick what, what I wish for for the next year, if that's okay. Yeah. And then, and, and then we can wrap it up. So there are two things. Um, I wish for improvement in regards to men's issues and I think it's possible and I'm working towards that with Mike uh, and uh, Elizabeth and many others with Gender Parity UK and I think the tides are turning so I think there is change possible. That is my official and professional answer but my personal answer is i'm um separating myself more and more from society i would say the um lockdowns the covid hysteria made me very aware of how vulnerable people are emotionally and mentally and i'm afraid of their fear so i would say it made me more libertarian and my plan for the next year is to become more self-sufficient to finally find a partner uh, a, one, a woman that I can have a family with that I like at one point having children that I can raise um, and and yeah in some ways, with gender parity, I'm, tr I'm turning my front to society and as a private person, I'm turning my back on society, which makes me a little bit schizophrenic, but I think these are the times. Um, good. <laughs> good for you. Philip, hopefully you'll, um, you won't disappear from us. Um, no, no, no. And, uh, See, I, I, See, I, I'm, I'm a born fighter and I, 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 I want to fight. Uh, I'm like, but on a private level, I'm um, 
and and I think all of us, all of our, us MRAs, we know that it can burn you out, and it can affect you emotionally quite deeply when you see that everything around you burns. <laughs> um, so sometimes you have to disconnect your private life from your your professional or your MRA life. And I think as a private person, I need to say, you know what, if you guys want to be lemmings and you want to jump over a cliff, by all means, do it. As an MRA, I'm still fighting for the good fight. As a private person, I gotta let go. <laughs> so when you say that you're, you're hoping to get a partner, essentially what you're saying is that you don't want a lot for Christmas. There's just one thing that you need. And you don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And and to be honest, and here's a little story, and I mean, this might be an absolutely nothing story in two days already or so, but three days ago, I saw a comment for from a very pretty girl under a political statement from somebody else. And it was a libertarian anti-lockdown statement. And I usually never do that, but I sent her a friend request and she answered the, the friend request. And now we've been talking a little bit for the last two days and she is half American, half Scottish. At the moment she's in Edinburgh, but her dad lives in Texas. So she spends uh, quite a bit of time in Texas. She's a Trump supporter. She's anti-lockdown. She's a libertarian, uh, all the good stuff. All the good stuff. Yeah, exactly. So we will see. And she's see, so, so far, I haven't scared her away. I, I She still likes me. I don't know why, but we'll see. It's, the, it's probably the beard. It's, it's um, the beard. It's the beard, I think. Good beard. I, I, ha I have no I have no problem if I'm just uh, uh, like a slutty, cheap fantasy for her. <laughs> if that If that's what works for her, that's fine. I think, I think it's interesting that, you know, um, supposedly, you know, in, in movies and stuff, men are always accused of, of wanting bimbos, you know, really stupid kind of, like, attractive women. Whereas, um, personally, um, an attractive woman who's, you know, rational and intelligent, that's the sexiest thing on the planet. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. There is one thing missing. A good heart. To me, the sexiest thing is actually a good heart. And that's what a lot of people and a lot of women don't get. When women ask, what does my partner want from me? He wants to feel safe. Yeah. He, wants, he wants to not be attacked. He wants to be able to be himself. And there is a beautiful, I saw it on Twitter, somebody posted it. It was a man coming home from work every day. And there was a security camera filming them all the time. And the wo woman, ran towards him every day, jumped in his arms like, like, like a monkey, Aww. like, and gave him a hug. And underneath it says, that's all a man wants. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, just, and to be honest, I think that's all a woman wants. I think a woman wants a man who truly loves her and a man wants a woman who truly loves her and cuts through all, all the crap and says, yeah, there are some issues because we all have issues. But I really love you, and I, and I care about you, and I think that's that's the end of the show. That's the end Yay, of the show. My I phone think that's is dying. Beautiful sentiment to end things on. Yay! Yeah. Okay, let's end the show. We wish you all a very, very, very merry Christmas, and thank you so much for being on the show. And we wish you all the best for 2021. It will. It can only get better. <laughs> because this year was shit um, oh, in five. So no, no, there was so much great stuff. There was so much great stuff, but I think overall, a lot of people felt very anxious and I hope that next year people are not so anxious anymore and that a new star is rising, Jupiter and Saturn, the great alignment, a new time is starting. Good, yay, Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Merry Christmas to y'all. Bye. 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 Good night. Bye.